Hi everyone, um, my name is Keisha Macias and I will be talking about Misa by Marjorie Shaw Stick. Um, so I will be I will begin by um, kind of explaining to you what it's about. So to begin, Misa is about um, a culture called Kong and they go by several different names but they reside in Africa near the Kalahari Desert um, and the story kind of talks about so the story is told by Marjorie the anthropologist and Nisa and so the way she formats the way Marjorie formats the ethnography is she kind of she kind of begins with the introduction so there's actually um, 15 topics. So what would happen is she would begin with the introduction and then Nisa would tell her side of the story about that topic. So I really loved the way um, Marjorie formatted that. I, fe I felt like it was super clear, it was easy to follow, especially after that Evans Pritchard book. I mean, it was kind of a harder, I felt like it was hard for me to kind of like understand and follow, um, but I felt like it was easier than the Evans Pritchard book. Um, so, um, a dilemma that occurred that I found in the ethnography was how, um, so the Kung culture had been exposed to other anthropologists. So they are a culture that have seen at least... I want to say it was like 10 anthropologists or maybe it was less than that within like the last six years or something. Um, this was actually written in the 1960s, 1970s. Um, so they were, they've been exposed to other anthropologists. So the Kung culture, they were actually able to know what the anthropologists were like and what they had for example they they knew they had money um they knew they had tobacco and that was their way of repaying the kung culture when they helped them was by giving them um tobacco or money so the kung culture kind of found ways to manipulate that in a way they would say oh you're being stingy because you're not giving me tobacco you know, because the Kung culture would eventually just come around the anthropologist and be like, oh, hey, can I have some tobacco? And if they said no, they would be kind of like, they would get kind of angry about it. Not really like, they were not physical about it. They were just verbally like upset about it. Um, <clears throat> and so, um, and that's something about their culture that I really like is they really emphasize equality and it's it's kind of like la zanduga, dangu, la zanduga in Beverly Chinas, um, in the aspect that um, they see women equal to men in in um, Nisa. So I found that um, similarity. Another similarity I found was how the central um, topic of Marjorie's research is women. So she was super interested in how they felt about being a woman in this culture. Um, um, sorry, I have notes here. So she focused on women and what it means to them to be a woman, um, what events were important in their lives, and it kind of, I, I found it to be really similar to um, La Zanduga. So um, that was nice. And so to backtrack a little bit, the reason why Marjorie chose Nisa in the first place um, is be like, so she, Marjorie has had many informants, but none of them were, I, I wouldn't say like interested in her work. They just weren't giving her the right information that she wanted or they were giving her information just not enough so Marjorie um, came across Nisa and she loved the way she was a that she storytelled so 
um, the way she t spoke about her experiences, that's what Marjorie fell in love with. And so she kind of based um, the book about um, Nisa's experiences, but at the same time, she incorporated the other informants' um, stories, not stories. It, she incorporated the other um, informants' information. So, like, she made sure everything Nisa was saying matched. So it wasn't just some random, you know, story that Nisa was just coming up with. She just wanted to make sure, like, the facts were in line. Um, let's see. So her relationship with Nisa. So since she kind of just spoke about Nisa, I'm going to talk about their relationship. But so Marjorie, her, I wouldn't say her goal, but she was really hoping to connect with her informant and she really wanted to create some sort of special bond so they did have a bond a bond and they did have a bonding experience so what happened was um nisa gave marjorie this bracelet and she was like here like i want to give you this so you could give to your child when you have her and you tell her about me and you bring her back here so i can hold her so that was a very special um uh, situation that happened between them um, but at the same time Marjorie noticed that Nisa wasn't as curious about Marjorie's life and she wouldn't really ask her that many um, she wouldn't ask her a lot of questions about what her life was in the what her life was like in the United States so she felt that Nisa didn't want to create some something special um, see so obviously um, Marjorie did um, the participant observation so she was living like them and she stayed with them and slept like them and ate with them whatever they made um, something that I noticed that was really different was Unlike, um, what's her name? Beverly Chinius? Ching Ching Chinius? Ching Unlike Beverly Chinius, um, uh, da, da, da. what's her name? Marjorie, sorry. Marjorie wasn't isolated. Um, for instance, she actually went on this research, uh, on this field on this field work with her husband so she kind of had him to experience this all to experience this with whereas um beverly genius she was by herself she she eventually got depressed so that was a big um difference that i found between those two ethnographies that just there they had Jean, um marjorie had someone with her while um um, Beverly did, Genius didn't. Um, I think, I think that's all I have. So, yeah, it was a great book overall. I really loved the format of it, and I loved how I think it was a pretty easy read. Um, a lot easier than, um, the witches, the witchcraft, the Zonde book that we read. Um, so overall, yes, I loved the way she um, formatted everything, and I loved Nisa's storytelling. She was a very great storyteller, and I, I actually would suggest this to other people. I really enjoyed it. I would read it again. It was super interesting, especially the first um, paragraph, actually the first chapter, or the opening scene, actually, in the book. You, you have um, Nisa talking about her experience um, during childbirth and she talks about how she woke up one morning and she just started walking towards a tree and it was her by herself and she gave birth by herself um, on the ground and so that's um, being able to imagine that is so um, foreign to me because here in the United States or at least in my family, um, 
you have your family surrounding you, you have um, a doctor, a nurse right there with you through the process, but with Nisa, she's by herself and she's laying down on the ground and the only way she can really cover um, the baby is with like animal fur. So it was super interesting and on top of that she cut her own umbilical cord and I mean I know here in the United States you can do that too but or I think you can actually I don't know um anyways yeah so it's it was really nice and I think I'm done bye